Hello, everyone, and welcome back to To Be Like Christ for the very last study in our first Samuel five minute Bible study series. Today is, uh, we've got a short chapter, but a very important chapter in the history of Israel. We're going to talk about the death of Saul and the end of his reign as the first king of Israel. So, if you have not yet downloaded the PDF and you want to, you can do that on our website. It's free. And let's get into our study for today. Let's talk about when these events happen. We are approximately in about 1010 BC. That's where most historians, I think, estimate the, the end of Saul's reign, 1010 BC. In terms of our characters, I've got David on the list, but he's not technically in this chapter, but it's kind of important to keep his presence and his whereabouts in mind as we discuss the events of this chapter. He was in Ziklag, living among the Philistines, because Saul was always trying to kill him. So our second character is Saul. He was the first king of Israel, and he reigned for approximately 40 years in Israel. We're going to talk about Jonathan. Jonathan is David's best friend and the son of King Saul. And then the Philistines. Yes, they're back, causing trouble once again. The Philistines were the longtime enemies of the Israelites. We're going to talk about a few new places on our map. The Israelites fought the Philistines on or at Mount Mount Gilboa, which is up towards the Sea of Galilee. The Philistines hung Saul's body at a place called Beth Shan. Beth Shan is just to the to the right or to the north, what is that? The northeast of Mount Gilboa before you cross the Jordan River. And then Saul and his sons were buried at Jabesh Gilead, which is on the other side of the Jordan River. Now let's go over to our outline. I feel like I kind of spoiled what's going to happen in this chapter. That always seems to happen when we discuss the map in the character section, but I don't know a better way to do it. <laughs> okay, so in the last chapter, or the last couple chapters, remember the Philistines were gathering to fight against the Israelites. Well, that, ha that battle happens here in chapter 31. So the whole chapter is just 13 verses. The death of King Saul is really the, the major thing that we're taking away from this. So the Israelites fought against the Philistines, but the battle went very poorly for them and they retreated and many Israelites were killed on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines caught up with King Saul and his sons and the Philistine archers began shooting at them. Saul was struck by one of their arrows and he was badly wounded. He knew that he wasn't going to be able to escape, so he asked his armor bearer to kill him because he didn't want the Philistines to catch him alive and take him prisoner and do, you know, who knows what to him after they captured him. However, his armor bearer was afraid to kill him, and so he wouldn't do it. So Saul propped up his sword and he fell on it, killing himself. And his armor bearer, after seeing this, uh, he, he did the exact same thing to himself. So both Saul and his armor bearer died. Saul's three sons were also killed in the battle with him. That would be Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchi Shua. So David's best friend has died in this battle as well. So Saul has died, his three sons have died, and so the throne of Israel is empty. The day following the battle, the Philistines found Saul's body on Mount Gilboa, and they took it, they cut off his head, they took his armor to one of their pagan temples, and then they hung his body and the body of his sons on a wall at Bashan. Or, excuse me, not Bashan, Bethshan. Now we're told that when the men of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done, some of their valiant men went and, and recovered Saul and uh, his son's bodies during the night from the Philistines, and they took them, they burned them, and then they buried their bones in Jabesh or Jabesh Gilead. You, you wonder, well, why the men of Jabesh Gilead? Why did they do this? Well, it might have been because, if you remember, one of the first things that Saul did as king was to save the people of Jabesh Gilead from the Ammonites who were coming against them. Remember that story about the Ammonite the, uh, the leader of the Ammonites said, oh yeah, we'll, we'll uh, let you guys live, but we want to tear out all of your right eyes. Well, it was Saul who saved the men of Jabesh Gilead from the Ammonites. I think, I want to say that was chapter like 11 or 12. So this ends the book of 1 Samuel. I think you can see why it ends here. We have a transition in the leadership of Israel. The king has died. Now he will be replaced as we move on into our next book. So that is 1 Samuel 31. Thanks for studying with us. We've got an application before we close, and uh, let's get to that now. 
A life of dedication to the Lord is a lifelong pursuit. Beware of starting off well, but finishing poorly. And we learn this from Saul. Saul started off with humility, with great promise, but he ended up as a big disappointment. He started out humble and loving the Lord, and he ended up as the enemy of God. Our relationship with the Lord is one that needs to be cared for and nurtured on a daily basis. It isn't enough to start well. We also need to finish well, and certainly God will help us to do that if that's our desire. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Now, before we finish up today, I also want to say we are going to start 2 Samuel. However, we're not going to start it right away. There's going to be a little bit of a break. And if you watch the video tomorrow, I'll do a little bit of a channel update explaining why that's going to be and what's brought that about. Uh, but don't worry, the break's not going to be too long, but I, I definitely need some time. So tune in tomorrow and <laughs> we will uh, discuss that a little bit further. But thanks to everybody who's been studying along with us and uh, everyone who's been on the 1 Samuel journey. I'll see you soon. Bye.